Okay, GIMP2 is loading in. It is Catalyst, uh, Caduceus versus uh, Zeminus. This is freaking me out a bit because Caduceus is actually online and he's messaging me and that's popping up together with the game messages and I, I'm getting confused and I don't know what's happening. Um, so uh, here we have Caduceus in the bottom left. We have got Zeminus in the in the bottom left, in the bottom right, in the top left, we've got Zeminus uh, playing Zerg. So in the last game, we saw an absolute cheese fest. Um, <laughs> we are, <laughs> look, he's doing it again. He's doing it again. Hang on, what were the messages that led up to that? Uh, don't die, build units, please die. Oh no, look at the smack talk, please have mercy. Um, Caduceus, you don't need mercy. You just, you know, uh, a, a slightly slicker um, response. You saw what was happening um, and you almost dealt with it. The zealot was out, you know, some chronos into the gateways. Uh, is he just gonna drop the hatch right there and be just ultra cheeky? <laughs> just go, what are you gonna do if I start building a hatch here? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're gonna pull all of your workers. But no, um, this drone is faking out. There is an expand to tell him. I don't think we're gonna see weird stuff from uh, from Zeminus in this game. Uh, so hopefully we're gonna see some straight up play because I think uh, now that we're in this stage of the tournament straight up play, we could see some really nice uh, strats. We could see some really nice action. So, first gateway finishes up for Caduceus, um, and what is this? Well, you know, just ignore that. Just drop the uh, drop the side core already. Um, he uh, gas finishes up um, the drone there, proving that drones are in fact tougher than um, uh, Protoss probes. Probes are the weakest of the uh, of the workers, I believe. But um, despite being the weakest worker. Uh, they have shields that regen, so uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they. I don't. Can't remember why they're the weakest, but anyway, they seem to be. Uh, here are some pylons. Uh, not going to get supplies off this time. The uh, side core goes down. Uh, the overlord coming into position to have a little peek and isn't really going to see much interesting from there. Uh, in Zerg land, we've got this going on. Uh, the first gas is about to finish up and the pull is done. The queen is building. So everything looking super normal. Um, and Zeminus is uh, just now gonna be transferring workers into gas and thinking about his tech choices. So the overlord goes deep, um, wanting to have a quick look inside to make sure there's nothing unexpected, but you didn't really have to. Um, the fact that the you could see that the side core was just finishing up, there isn't gonna be anything funky until the side core is finished up. So um, hang on just a moment. I'm gonna have to pause this, whoa. And I'm back. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, Scott, before the side core finishes up, you're never really going to see anything of, of particular interest. It's once the side core finishes that you want to get in. So about now is the time, really, that you want to dive in because the side core is finished. Um, so you've given your opponent time to build whatever tech choice they're going for. And as it turns out, it's a Twilight console. Now, if I'm building a Twilight, maybe I'm going for something basic like charge. Maybe I'm going for something basic like blink. Um, ooh, this is a weird place to build three pylons. Um, if this if this twilight is to enable a sneaky tech like a dark shrine, for example, I'd have much preferred it to be hidden at the back of the base so that uh, it's very hard for this overlord to see it. Um, on the flip side, you know, maybe this is the double bluff. If you know the overlord is there, you put the twilight in plain sight, um, knowing that when this overlord comes in to have a peek, maybe it catches the sight of that and your opponent starts to panic and they think, oh my goodness, that's a very fast twilight. Is there gonna be dark Templars? Quick, quick, detection everywhere. Um, and, and they spend uh, they spend money on things that are not going to help them, which is a win for you. You know, if you can convince your opponent to spend money unnecessarily, you're doing perfectly well out of that. Uh, but as it happens, it is charge, and that is not a bad choice. Uh, we're seeing a fairly ling heavy composition from Zeminus. Uh, now, whether he knows that charge is coming, whether he sniffed it, but the bin lanes, uh, the bin lane nest is done, and. Um, 
Bendings are brilliant against salads, absolutely superb against them. So, uh, you know, bendings can definitely answer this, but if these charge lots uh, encounter the lings before there are bendings up, you know, charge lots just when you need to send them down the ramp, like you don't leave those two on their own. Um, you need to make sure you're uh, slaying here. Um, uh, maybe Cadizia has just been a little bit cautious uh, and making sure that some of these zealots are not in hold position so that these can't get up. But you only need this one on hold position. The, the others uh, you can definitely send down to a uh, half bad these, you know, because zealots, that many zealots will, will absolutely thrash that many things um, without any bother whatsoever. So uh, losses incurred by uh, both players, but um, in general, zealots trade extremely well against. Uh, so uh, look in the production tab, uh, Zeminus just droning up uh, and kind of crank out some more links. No tech yet, the lair goes down um, and there's a couple more gateways coming out for Caduceus. So uh, lining up, uh, both of these players lining up to, to go into the mid game. Um, we've got uh, a carapace uh, essentially armor researching for the zerg player still uh, just the one gas being mined from there is a gas in the natural but but nothing coming out of it just yet uh, the third has gone down and he is going to send another batch of links presumably this time we're going to see bin links because um, the bending nest has been finished up for some time and uh, yeah Ah, okay. Uh, so Overlord Speed is being researched, and I think that maybe we're going to see some Ben Rain here. I, you know, I don't want to tempt it. I don't want to go and like uh, sort of curse it by by suggesting it in advance. Um, dare I hope that we're going to see some Ben Rain. Uh, this Overlord, just cheeky as you know, wandering about inside the Protoss biz. You're completely uncontested, um, and, and you've got the uh, you've got these gateways. I mean, I mean, why not just um, why not just crank out a stalker and just chase this away? You know what I mean? Otherwise, it's just looking at everything you're doing. But what is Caduceus doing right now? There's literally nothing in the production tab. Uh, it's because he's busy microing over on the other side of the map when I wasn't even looking. Oh my goodness! How do you how do you guys to even tolerate me? I mean, I'm, I'm a terrible, terrible caster. Anyway, these zealots are going to get loads done. The links are on the other side of the map, even when they come back. Uh, there aren't enough of them to deal with this number of charge lots. Charge lots are lethal. So uh, huge amounts of, of economic damage done already. We've got uh, 17 workers dead. Um, these zealots aren't in a bad position if you just let them stay there because the links can't actually, you know, you've got links on both sides, but they, they're not in the middle of the zealots. So uh, the zealots themselves are, are fine, trading quite well there in that position. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a GG. I just, uh, Zeminus doesn't have, I don't think, well, that said, Caduceus does need to continue this pressure. I mean, I mean, Caduceus, surely you can smell the blood in the water. Why aren't you warping in more zealots to follow this up? Um, you, you've done a ton of damage, uh, but you're only building one worker. So, you know, um, to be honest, I, I think you have probably done game ending damage. Let's look at the, the, the army, sorry, the worker supply. You, you know, Caduceus now doubling, uh, doubling the workers of... Um, Oh, that is nasty. 101 units killed 29 of the workers. You know, that is savagery, absolute savagery. Uh, I think I'd have liked to, to have seen Caduceus just go for the jugular there, just go for the kill. Um, he certainly could have, you know, he's got uh, how many warp gets at home? We've got five warp gets here. Uh, it's a, a Korean forget. Um, with charge, it very much is a Korean forget. Um, and, and I think had he just warped in more zealots, he could have run in there and ended this game. I'm not sure about stalkers. You've been in your opponent's man. You didn't see a roach war and you didn't see anything that, um, other than just, you know, ling bang. So uh, what are the stalkers for really? Uh, the, the, if your opponent's building lings and you've got charge lots, you, you don't need stalkers. Um, uh, and why not just stop and take out these overlords? Although you're not gonna supply block your opponent at present. Um, with them having, you see, stalkers, they're, they're so bad against these lings, the lings just, once, once the stalkers are surrounded, they, they go down pretty quickly, the lings. Um, so the stalkers, I don't know, uh, I, I guess they're adding some DPS, giving you the ability to pick up overlords, but anyway, um, this is surely game ending. I'll, I'll be uh, impressed if Seminus manages to come back from here. His one saving grace is he's got this mining bits that Caduceus, I think, is unaware of, but Caduceus from here, you know, 
has got such an income that he can just continue to trade. He can do basically what Zerg is supposed to do and continue to just send in flushes of units and trade out with the Zerg units. Um, you know, Zeman is building enough lanes to deal with this, uh, certainly, but, but the problem is he can't afford to continue building lanes like that, uh, whereas Caduceus can continue. Uh, and there is the GG. Um, yeah, you know, you never know with this base, you might find a way into it. Um, certainly spine crawlers weren't a bad idea. They were uh, are, are pretty strong. Um, but now that you've lost the queens here and here and no transfuses available, it, you know, it was very much an uphill struggle. Caduceus with this base saturated as well. Um, so well played Caduceus, nicely executed. Um, timing attack with the charge. Uh, you can see that there was a forge ready for some follow-up upgrades, but what I'd have loved to have seen was something transitional. Um, you know, you knew that you were doing a lot of damage. You knew that you had a big economic advantage. So, you know, a nice way to capitalize on that would have been maybe, you know, drop two star kits and just transition into air, um, or perhaps drop, you know, double robo or whatever. Um, whatever tech path or even since you've already got the twilight throw down the templar archives uh, and get some archons into that mix as well to to seal the deal um but not going to be too critical uh, uh, it was a good win so gg is one game apiece